Hello again, and welcome back to this series of courses on research methodology. My name is Afaf Rabhi, an assistant lecturer at Hasiba Bimboli University. And in today's course, we're going to learn all about the basics of data in social sciences research. The key points that we will address are a general introduction or an overview, a definition of data, primary data and secondary data as two separate points. Then we will move to introducing on more details, interviews, questionnaires, observation before we draw on a conclusion. The specific objectives that students should achieve by the end of this course are to understand the meaning and the significance of data in social sciences studies, to label the sources of data based on their type, to identify what counts as data, to list the most common data collection tools, and to develop an idea about the post-data collection stage, or what we call what happens next. Many would assume that after deciding on the topic of the research, refining the research questions and setting clearly the objectives of the study, researchers would wonder about the methodology they're going to use. Well, this is not the case, because what actually happens is researchers asking, what do I need to know and why, instead of the how? As you can see in this mind map, research data is the full step in the process of conducting research, which means, although thinking about data starts in the earlier stages, collecting data and going to the field does not start until after writing the literature review. You should know that not all data sources are the same. There are two conventional types of data, what we call primary data and secondary data. As to how researchers decide on which type they collect, it depends on a variety of factors, such as research questions and objectives. The name primary data comes from the fact that the researcher is the one collecting or generating the data, which means he or she is the main tool for data collection tool, or which is why in the research methodology, we say the researcher is the means for data collection. Secondary data, on the other hand, stands for all types of data that have been collected before, perhaps for other studies or other research projects. They are pre-existing data at the disposal of the researcher, who can, in turn, use it to answer his or her research questions. Although valuable, research data are often underused. Examples of these are newspapers, diaries, biographies, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to present three of the most commonly used data collection tools. And of course, the first one is interviews. While you might be familiar with the concept of interviews in fields like journalism, research methodology pays more attention to how interviews are conducted. But first, let's define interviews. An interview is a question-based conversation during which the person asking questions, also known as the interviewer, takes the lead by asking explicit questions and expecting explicit answers by the interviewee. This is what makes the interviews different from everyday conversations. The fact that they are planned for can be structured, semi-structured and other types which now we're going to talk about. The main types of interviews. There are three types of interviews. First, the structured ones. What is a structured interview? To answer this question, 
we should look at the interview as a set of pre-designed questions, which means the interviewer knows what to look for. They know exactly what they want to find out. In a structured interview, questions are asked in the same order and the interviewer is advised to stay on script or to stick to the script they preferred before. Unstructured interviews, on the other hand, unfold like an informal day-to-day -day conversation. There are no specific questions to ask and they can be very informal. Coming back to the semi-structured interviews, they are the middle ground before the between sorry, the structured and unstructured. The interviewer, in this case, would prepare an interview guide with general themes to consider when asking questions. He or she can have a predefined set of questions and still be ready to follow up on the answers of the interviewee and ask further questions if and when. Next on the list of the most common data collection tools are questionnaires. Unlike interviews, questionnaires can be administered and filled without the presence of the researcher. They are mostly used with large samples of populations or large populations. Questionnaires are cheap, convenient and easy to complete and can be administered online. According to scholars, there are several types of questions researchers need to consider before designing their questionnaires. And as you can see here in the image, the format too can be different. The last tool in today's seminar is observation, which is a scientific process to collect evidence through looking systematically and noting people, event, behaviors, and so on. Like interviews, observations range from a structured to a less structured form, such as participant observation. The main advantage of using observation is gathering first-hand evidence. As the picture shows, there are two types of observation. Participant observation, in which the researcher takes part in the study or event, and non-participant observation. Well, that's it for today's course. Thank you for tuning in.